Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome to the show right now. You know her from shows like Orange is the New Black and, of course, Fear the Walking Dead, Sunday nights, 9 p.m. on AMC. Elizabeth Rodriguez, how are you? Hello, I'm well, thank you. How's everything? Things are kind of great right now. I would say so. Yeah, 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 You're yeah. You're on two successful television shows. Not that you uh, haven't been on successful shows before. I know, but... Going through your rundown, you've been on almost everything. I know, I was, sorry, I was just joking about clearly I'm affordable. Um, but, um, I, I, I'm great. I'm on two successful shows that are completely different genres, um, playing completely different characters. Uh, and they happen to cross, uh, audiences. I found out while I was at, uh, Comic-Con, oh, I thought you were which gonna shocked say they were, me. I thought you were going to say they were going to cross over like the zombies. No, but I was shocked the, when I showed up to Comic-Con <laughs> and I came out and people were like, ah, I was like, Oh, do you guys watch orange? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. It's just weird that I would think they they would be different. Like people can't have more than one taste. I don't know. I'm a little naive. Let's start with Comic Con uh, since you just brought it up here. I, I was out there for San Diego, and uh, big response to Fear the Walking Dead only because everybody knew it was in Los Angeles, and yeah. they knew it was supposed to be uh, sort of along the same timeline as Walking Dead. But as we see that it's really more of a prequel, yeah. without the two connecting at least for right now. Um, and right outside the actual convention across the street, they had this little setup with a sign that said Los Angeles. I know. And for the, most of the first day, it did nothing. Like there was a chain link fence around its stairs and uh, it just looked like an alleyway in Los Angeles and nothing happened. So people were like, I don't know what this is. And then when they realized, oh, it's Fear of the Walking <clears> Dead or whatever, they're just taking photos. And then I saw later on that first day, they didn't tell people what they were going to do. So people are on the steps taking photos and all of a sudden... The walkers, walkers just come out and scare the shit out of everybody, and there's people screaming, that's awesome. running. Awesome! Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's I didn't know that. Well done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was your con experience like? Was that your first con? It was my first con. It was really, it was really intense, only because we were shooting the night before, really late, and so like. The amount of hours I got to sleep was never enough. Right. Uh, as a woman, you need at least two more hours on both ends, uh, you know, either side, just to sort of wake up and try to look pretty. So it made me a little more jealous about the guys. Everyone was really great. It just was like this thing that was, you can't prepare yourself. You're going from here to there. You don't even know. You're like, where are we going? What are we doing? What are we going? What are we doing? You know, snacks, food, food, food. Where are you going? What are you doing? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Touch up, touch up. You know, and you can't ever, you don't even know by the end of it who you saw, who you right. didn't, who took pictures with you. You, you. If you're lucky, you have two seconds as you cross somebody else's itinerary to say hello if you even see anyone. It's great that within Comic-Con, it's the only time where it's really acceptable to have people that will shove massive amounts of people out of the way so that talent can walk through and everyone's cool with it. Yeah. Like if you have handlers or something and they're just pushing kids in Batman right. costumes. The greatest <laughs> also thing, there was a time where like it took so much time to get in your cars and get around that that one time <laughs> we had to go like a couple of blocks away and like there was an executive decision made that these guys, AMCPR guys, went out and bought flip flops. Full on because no one knew, like recognized us we literally put on like flats, carried our shoes, and walked two blocks to do another another interview because it was the best decision and the quickest way to get two blocks away. Right. Um, like but every the first time you could actually escape before you get like, yeah. too yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. They all determined, oh yeah, we can. No one's gonna really recognize us right now. Yet. And also the fans, I think they're such huge fans of The Walking Dead that they just without with only seeing that clip they gave us so much love which speaks volumes for like that show and the fan base did you notice um with fear of the walking dead when it came out um you know with everything in the internet people are going to complain about something so the first two episodes a lot of the uh discussion online was this is too slow it's taking forever what's going on but then that third episode hit and it goes completely a 180 right and now you're just speeding down through the course of the show I'm like oh my god I should have just kept my mouth shut right this is really going somewhere um I don't read um I don't go online uh to Very read smart. reviews <laughs> good or bad even when I do plays because I feel like if I give attention to the good ones then that means I have to give attention to the bad ones um and so I don't but 
But speaking of that, I think it was it's inevitable. You know, it's such an enormous fan base that there absolutely are going to be people you're not going to make happy. You're going to end up with new fans. I, I've heard I've from all sorts of experiences, other actors on the show, people here, people in my life that either watch the regular show or never watch it and are watching it for different reasons that really like it for itself. So you're going to absolutely lose some fans that uh, that want that. Um, but you're going to gain other fans and, and I think it's its own thing and it's not competing. So, uh, you can't do anything about, you know, people's opinions as to it's moving slow. I love character based things that move slow, but that isn't one of our taglines when civilization ends, it ends quick. So it's about to go down. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a big fan of like the original Walking Dead and the graphic novels, and I love Fear the Walking Dead. I like the pace that it's taking because I felt like it was gonna. I was worried actually the opposite that it was gonna rush right into it, and we weren't gonna see society crumble. We weren't gonna see all of that, and I think it's pretty cool. And I think even like even in the last episode from this past week, when you're seeing everything starting to be vacant, like what was that like shooting in L.A.? Did you have to like clear people out or do things early in the morning, or is it like some CGI type effects to make everything look so empty? Ah, it's it's everything. It, you know, we were in a neighborhood that I think we like, you know, you pay the whole block to m- go to a hotel while you sort of use just the outside of the houses. Um, I think some of it was CGI. I think like when you see all the empty, like in the back, I don't know how they did that. I was like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> like when all the lights got turned off and that's episode before when we're driving in the truck yeah, and, and you like see you it start. Yeah, down. that's CGI. And I was like, that's really incredibly spooky and incredibly well done um uh we shot it was interesting because we shot we cross board so we shot two episodes at a time and so we also shot a bunch of it in canada and then came back to california to finish all the exteriors and so it was never a feeling of a complete episode so i never felt like i knew what happened from beginning to end Mm -hmm. um and until i watch them and it comes together i forget how many scenes i'm in in episodes and all of a sudden Mm -hmm. i'm like oh my goodness this was really like you do not remember what piece you shot for what episode it's like binge watching in a way you're like oh my god when was that episode (laughs) Oh, oh you're seeing it come together and it's this complete thing and you haven't remembered it being complete since you read it the first time Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know well, in episodes three and four, it, they put you in a situation which uh, you don't really get to see a character uh, be put in where you're the ex-wife with your ex-husband and his current wife and his current family, and you're forced to be together despite it being a crisis. That doesn't take away from the fact that uh, even though you know the end of the world is coming, that it's like you still have s- certain little things that you just can't get over as far as human relations go? Um, I think in that situation, uh, my backstory was that I'm the one that left him, which made me really, really happy so that it wasn't sort of the, you know, obvious go to, oh, you know, the the the, the, the scorn ex-wife, the la, la, la. And, you know, uh, there that's his girlfriend and her family. And I feel like because they're both mothers, there is empathy. Uh, I think, you know, just being under the same roof, you know, it becomes about what do you say? What don't you in any circumstance when you're under someone's roof? It's also like, you know, Salazar and and Travis, you know, there's these two alpha males and they're dealing with other things as well as to who's going to be in charge and who knows more or whatever that that ends up being so i think it was more that than resentment i love 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 and i think it speaks volumes the scene where where she talks to me about susan and she tells you know i talk look i know we're not friends but you know for the kids this that and the other um and i agree to this thing i think it's it's a in that moment it showed i think a mutual respect as women and the strengths of what we know travis to be and what women are capable of doing you know of whether i'm really capable of doing it or not deciding that i will not let her i think speaks volumes to the respect i have as for her as a person and as a woman and vice versa for her to ask me yeah it's really good i really actually like the the double family dynamic and how it's working out and even with the last episode from this past week we could start to see where the divide yeah. is starting yeah, to happen because yeah, yeah. for the first couple episodes i was like all right how are they gonna cohabitate with right. all these people in right. these families and then 
clear lines were starting to be drawn in the last episode right. where you can kind of see right. where things are going to split off. Like, where is that possibly going to start taking us? Is it going right. to get more tense in that right. kind of, I don't want to spoil anything, right. but is it going to get more tense with the family relationship? Well, the great thing is that like when I first read them, I was like, oh man, I don't have a lot to do with them. Like, how am I busy doing these things? And I think it was great that like, because Liza is a nursing student, she got to sort of find something to feed her and make her feel like she can do something in this time where we're just like waiting in this nine days. And so she goes around the neighborhood doing the best she can. And that becomes a little resentful for Madison in terms of like, she's left with playing the role of the woman of the house. Um, But like by the end of it, you know, when she says, Liza did this. Yeah. I was like, oh, I actually wrote Kim. I was like, Sorry. you know, I was like, I, every time I watch, I, I love her so deeply. And I think one of the greatest of everything I've done, one of the greatest, uh, profound, uh, gifts has been a friendship with her. Um, but, um, I wrote her, she was like, I don't remember what happened in that episode. I was like, it ends with, and I quoted her and she's like, she wrote back, Oh, I was mad at Liza. (laughs) (laughs) That's what she wrote back. I love her so much. Like, you know, and so, yeah, I know you, at the end of that episode, you sort of like, ah, it was like, it was really like a brick wall. Cause you're like, Oh, where's this going to go? And you're like, Oh crap. Like that escalated quickly. I'm not going to tell you it happens. But I do redeem myself. Okay. <laughs> in, okay my, cool. in my childlike voice. We're getting down to the uh, very end of season one. It's a six episode run. Anything you can tell us going into the last episode? Does it, without giving a spoiler. We have two more episodes, yeah. <clears throat> without giving a spoiler, does it follow the Walking Dead format of yeah. usually ending on a cliffhanger? Or is it going to be, we don't know what the future holds kind of ending? I think it's going to be both. It's going to be. I don't think I know it's going to be both. (laughs) I know. I'm like, I think um, I know that it's going to end. There's going to be surprises and there's definitely going to be also, I don't know what the world holds for them. What do you know about season two then? That uh, that they don't know anything. (laughs) That they have no idea that right now it's the the first episode hasn't been written. Oh, so you're still waiting on, uh, for, to get that call saying, okay, we start filming on this date. No, you, they sort of know when they start filming and, and the writers are now, like, they're breaking story and they're now starting to write their outlines. But that's what I know, that they, they don't even know where it's shooting. So, uh, so far, I guess, in this universe, because it's, I mean, it's the same, like, Walking Dead universe, you haven't been able, to, you haven't been covered in blood and guts yet. Are you, are you been very happy about that? Or do you want to just be completely soaked from Walker blood yet? Well, there's moments that happen in the next few episodes. It's weird. It's sort of like I have a lot of testosterone. I'm like a 14 year old tomboy. And so there's a lot of me that like there's scenes in the next episode where all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm in an action film. And I loved, love that. Like there's like huge production days. And I'm just like, this feels like a total like hundred million dollar action film. And so that was exciting. I mean, you know, you want to do it. It all sounds like a good idea till you're in it and you're like this is gross yeah because <laughs> yeah, i can just imagine in the heat of la as opposed to just just as bad as georgia it's gotta yeah. be not fun covered in sticky blood i think mosquitoes. i think Ge- nothing beats the sticky world and the the wood of georgia I, yeah. from what i've heard from uh, on like from per- people i know on the show so do you have like a lot of communication with the other cast members are they like hey don't take the you know the mojo away from us no, we we met, we saw each other at, at Comic Con and didn't see each other after, haven't seen each other. They were in middle shooting. Um, they were really, really supportive and lovely, um, and open and just wonderful people, which I think comes from the top. It trickles down from you know a president of AMC, Charlie, and and just all the way down. I think, um, and uh. They're very, very adamant in letting people know that we're we're not competing. Yeah. We're not the same show. Um, we're a prequel, and so there is none of that. Um, so if they did have that, I'd be like, mm, we're not. This, we're, no one's told you. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're so not that. You know, we're not. It, it it wasn't. I don't think we ever felt like they were gonna come and feel that way. Um, and they didn't. They were really lovely and supportive. Um, and, and excited because I think they, you know, while they're filming in Atlanta, they're hearing th- what's going on because we have 
a lot of the same producers, so they get to hear what's going on with us or whatever personal stories people are sharing, which I hope we were behaved well enough yeah. <laughs> to make them go, yeah, they're good people, they're not a-holes or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. So, um, Obviously, with Fear the Walking Dead right now uh, being as popular as it is, people recognize you from this show. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But uh, before that, uh, people knew you from uh, uh, All My Children and then, going, <laughs> and then going into Orange is the New Black. When you're out on the street or somebody recognizes you, what do you get recognized for the most? Right now, I still get recognized the most for Orange, I, I think. Um, um, it's inter- It's so weird, like the randomness. Like, you know, we were we had a. We were in Canada with a hidden name, a covert operation in the middle of nowhere. No one's supposed to know. And I get a piece of fan mail and the piece of fan mail is from America. And I'm like, how did I get this here? I open it up and it's a picture of a character I play on Grimm. (laughs) 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 Did I have a small recur on? I was like, what? It's that random. Dear like, Agent Chavez, please sign yeah, this in return. I, that's what it was. I was like, staff, you guys look what included. I got to Fear the Walking Dead, a piece of fan mail from Grimm. That's it was awesome. like amazing. See like, you at your hotel. But the only piece of fan mail I got there was for Grimm. I don't, I can't even imagine how that happened. Um, I he was like, this will freak her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the other day, somebody mentioned, like walked by me, mostly it's orange still. Um, uh, I think because it's been four years, so people know me more. And I think the more they see the next two episodes, you know, my character is still being developed. So there's more of me per episode, at least different parts of me, different experiences. So I think people by the end of the sixth episode will have different feelings, you know, but I think they've been with Aleda more than they've been with anybody else. So because um, besides all of that, I mean, you've had an extensive career here. I just want to point out some of the major projects that you've been a part of because it's very impressive. Um, for as far as movies go, I forgot and, and I went back and looked at it. You're in Miami Vice, right? I Did you see that. me in that I, little like Clint Eastwood moment I right? have there? Uh, you you were in Blow, and this part I didn't, I couldn't find you, but I saw you listed for Desperado. It's not me. Do not believe this is a good thing that you brought this up, people. Out there in the world, do not believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> the things on IMDb are not always your credits. And you have no idea how hard it's been to try to get that off of my internet, <laughs> off of my IMDb. The thing is that Robert Rodriguez assist, has a sister that has the same name as me. And I think he gave her a small part in Desperado. So for years... In years, I'd show up places and people would be like, I love your brother. I'm like, that's not my brother, dude. <laughs> I, if he was, I wouldn't be doing working here. You should public. Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that I'm not. That's good because I'm not in Desperado. I don't even. I, I mean, Because you should be claiming royalties then. If they're yeah, keep it and up I, I would have been like, you better put me in all your movies. Yeah. But like, and I wouldn't have had to gone back to working in, in as a bartender for so many years in between things I've done. But I'm not in Desperado. And there's like one other credit on there. That that is also not mine. Well, let's see if uh, if it's one of these here because listen to this listen to this list that she's been involved with. Six feet under me. Okay, Oz me. NYPD Blue me. ER me. Third Watch me. The Shield me. Prime Suspect me. Law and Order me. Which is awesome because she's three different roles over the span of five <laughs> years. <laughs> and then, then welcome to Law and Order. <laughs> um, and then you did Law and Order SVU yes, which is awesome. Um, of course, all my children me. You were on Power on Stars. Yes. And, you know, Grimm, yeah. as you said. Yeah, the rest and of them are me. Else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like something like golf balls or some film that I'm like, what is that? Who is that? What is that? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I don't even know if his sister is still acting, but, you know, she's obviously a SAG member, and so they, put, they lumped them all together. You should just send a notice to SAG and just say, oh, there's been a change of address. Please send all checks to yeah. here. And Except for the fact spend- that if she is not acting, they'd be sending my checks to her. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, damn it. That's right. <laughs> it's like reverse Columbia House. Yeah. yeah, she's the only one that would benefit from that other than, I hope, from her brother. <laughs> yeah. uh, season, besides, uh, we know that there's going to be a season two for Fear the Walking Dead. Right. Uh, what else? Uh, what other projects do you have in the works? I'm in the middle of finishing the fourth season of Orange. We're halfway through shooting that. So that's kind of it right now. Um, I've been doing a lot of 
just purging and like in my apartment, I'd just been spending a lot of time at home. I don't know if it's because I just experienced this like intense apocalyptic thing or <laughs> as much work as I did. Um, I I ended up doing another episode of Grimm that should be out really soon. And that sort of wraps up that story in a really fun kind of great way. Um, and I don't know what else I'm going to have. I guess more of these things. You Not know. a bad thing to have. Yeah. No, a really, 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 really good thing to have. It's a, an embarrassment of riches right now. One other thing I wanted to point out uh, with Orange is the New Black is the everything is very clicky in this prison here. You know, you have the black girls, the white girls, the religious girls, the, the Spanish girls. The meth heads. <clears throat> the meth heads. The old timers. The Spanish girls are the prettiest ones in the whole system there. And <laughs> that's very they sweet make of you. All the other cliques do all the nude scenes and the Spanish girls who are the most attractive ones don't have to really do any of them. I think that has to do. I think it's hysterical that they but do But I think it has to do with not being on contract. So the first <laughs> season there were four people that were series regulars. So I don't know who decided that who needed to be naked and who didn't and how that was worked out. And then the second season they added another bunch of women, m- more of the black women. Right. Um I made them series regular, so I guess that was part of their contract. Like, now nah, you we'll get give you paid. full time, but you got to well, sign to this. Yeah, <laughs> and so I think what happened is there was a moment in the second season for me where I had, or oh, the first season, I don't remember, it's a blur, where I come on to Matt, to the guard, and like full on, it was like nude, you did, and I, it became this huge thing like, I'm, I, no, that's not happening. I never signed up for this. Um, and so that it's sort of that it's, I think it's not randomness. I think it's more of like mo- a lot of us are reekers. And so we were not, um, I'm like, I don't know about we, I can only talk about me. I'm like, yeah. that's not going down like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't think it, uh, of it as being random. I just noticed that it's like, okay, here that's are the so really funny. attractive girls. <laughs> We're not going to make them get naked. Let's all the awkward ones and and the really you know, like. There's some of the attractive <clears throat> the that women that do get naked. I've seen some sexy women get naked, but but right. it doesn't have the uh, the feel of Oz, right? Where right, of course there was just random dudes naked right, for right, no right, reason right, right, just right. because it was Oz. Yeah, no, ours I think has to do with who's on contract and who's a recur <laughs> and who's willing to do what. On a I thought basis. it was just to keep people stringing them along. On the like, eventually, they're going to get to the really hot girls. Eventually, they haven't one gotten season, there yet. all of them will be naked. I personally, if it gets to that with me, I would need to know, have at least six weeks in advance to full on do a cleanse <laughs> and like work my butt off for that five seconds of camera. I am not kidding. They know that's not that doesn't happen. Like that's not today. I don't have that today. I'm not camera ready. Well, if you go the uh, the progression of people on Walking Dead in a season or two, you're going to be so ripped and jacked from totally. like having to fight zombies. You don't even have to worry about. I that. know, I know. <laughs> That's what happened in Miami Vice. I had six weeks of training leading up to the principal day of photography, and I was in like the in most insane shape of my life. Yeah, that's all you have to do for when you fin- when you if they get a season five for Orange, right. you just go. Let me do season two of, of, of the Walking Dead. Walking uh, Dead. They're getting me a trainer. Right. Then we'll discuss right. for season five. Totally, totally. So with all these different shows you work on, do you have to travel a lot for filming? Because I know like Orange is the New Black films in Brooklyn a lot, and then Fear the Walking Dead and seems it, like it's it like films LA. In Queens a lot. It's and, actually I travel so little. to I live really close okay. to Kaufman Astoria, so okay. that's an amazing uh, just happenstance. Uh, Fear shot in Vancouver and in LA, and then Grimm shoots in Portland, and then I have a I had a small recur. I don't know if I'm coming back on power and that shoots in Brooklyn and Steiner. Um, so yeah, I do have to travel all over the place. Um, it's, it, it, you know, it's kind it has its great things and it has its challenging things of like just exhaustion, but, um, it's all good. I, you know, it, these are like, I'm just embarrassed to even say like complain about any of it. I'm like, the truth of the matter is actors will fl- live in Japan. I, like, yeah. It doesn't even matter <laughs> where, to do great work. Yeah, and you're traveling from hit show to hit show to hit show. It's really not a, a chore. <laughs> no, and I've been really blessed at working with like cast and crews that are wonderful, wonderful units. And so I'm just sort of like, really? That Yeah, I'm like, that's just the icing on the cake. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you do in your downtime when you're not shooting all of these things? I tell you, I don't leave the apartment. <laughs> 
I the, I do, and I also like l- lately. I've been just. Is I came Netflix ac- the last thing you want to watch? Sometimes I don't <laughs> go on Netflix because it overwhelms me, like to see Orange come up. But when it's I did right just on finish, the front page. Like, yeah, I, I finished. I, I I finished watching The Honorable Woman. That's an eight part series that I wanted to watch, which was amazing. I watched in three days. Um, when I was shooting um, Fear, I watched four seasons of The Killing. Oh, nice. Because they were shooting in the same studio and I always wanted to watch it. So I wanted to see that. Um, I stay kind of dark. I don't, you know, um, there's a, I want to see Bloodline and like AMC has a bunch of new shows that are coming up. But I like being able to see a couple of seasons. So like, you know, it's weird. Like right now, like one hour is not enough almost. You have to watch like, it's almost like watching a film, like two and a half, three hours. So three, three episodes is a good sort of block of like, time to watch something but sometimes it becomes four or five in one night well if you're looking for something dark to watch on netflix i would highly recommend black mirror if you haven't seen it oh my god i heard all about it it's like the sci-fi twilight zone it's crazy i heard i heard craziest shows i'm going to i heard about that it's two short seasons is the christmas special up there now Not up yet okay there's two short seasons and then there's a christmas special after the second season that stars john ham from uh from mad men amazing oh that's great i heard about that show um, but, um, yeah, I do that. And then I do a lot of cleaning and nesting at home. Like I just found a recipe to make this real simple, like tomato sauce because tomatoes are in season <laughs> in like August and September. And they're like the cheapest. And I've already made the, the small batch tomato sauce where you end up with two and a half cups. I've made three batches in a week. <laughs> I'm like, I think this is going to be a problem. So I have a freezer full of sauce, which becomes premeditated to eating pasta. Because what else are you going to do with your pasta sauce? Bring yeah. it to the prison. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. Uh, the there's writing. Liz with her jars again. Yeah, and I go, you know, I try to see theater and sort of support people and spend time with, like, my friends that I hardly get to see. Well, um, you, you've you done um, a, a, a lot of theater. Uh, so you've done movies, you've done television, and you've done some th- and theater. Which out of the three genres do you enjoy the most? Or is acting just acting? Um, they all have uh, challenges, and they all have great things about them um i enjoy all of them um i think when you when you guest star in something it's kind of the most difficult because it's a machine you're going into and and you're sort of like going in to fill a job that so basically when you audition you're probably 90 percent of the characters already down so there's no space for you you know you don't get 17 takes (laughs) you have to come in fully prepared and like you know and be the best and help them Mm -hmm. um plays you know there's a lot of variables you hope that you have a great director that can get you to to be the best that you can that you get along with the whole cast in that situation if there's somebody that's crazy you you've seen them eight shows a week plus you're spending so much time rehearsing with them that then you it it can be a little you know off where they can affect you in a way that it's live so there's no magic of editing there could be someone that like rubs you and you have scenes with them you better figure it out and protect yourself so that you can do that and sometimes you can't sometimes there's no chemistry and films are these machines that sometimes you you know you're waiting days they call you in you go back home they call you in they that one you definitely get paid to wait yeah. the most yeah so which out of that is your favorite i don't have a favorite um i don't have a favorite i think maybe films because i haven't done enough of them i want you know i'd like to do more films but the parts in films are smaller and i think now that i have like regular parts they're more complete so you feel more there's more gratification in doing something like a Leda that becomes a real character because now she lives inside me fully the way a play does I think for the longest time a play was because you really get to fully live and create a character and it's and, very intimate too. and also really dimensional of this character and bring her as fully to life as possible where in films you'll have a smaller part and a lot of times in TV you have a smaller part but um, right now, um, my favorite is television. <laughs> it's AMC. <laughs> yes, of course. Fear the Walking Dead. I, Sunday nights, 9 yes, p.m. on AMC. Liza. Well, AMC's got great stuff. Like 
They oh my just, goodness! Uh, like, All their best. stuff is like character driven, so incredible, so different. And they I have just, new stuff coming up. Yeah, I just saw the trailer for I think it's like Into like the Borderlands or or Badlands, whatever it is. Badlands. Which yeah, looks like a Ninja Game of Thrones type thing. It looks pretty awesome. It's insane. Mm. I had someone that was working on it. It's like a giant, giant, giant endeavor, and that yeah. trailer looks amazing, right? Yeah, it seems like it seems like it's a really big just world. Like yeah. I, I got a really just grand sense of what it's going to be yeah. just on that two minute And I trailer. love me some martial arts stuff. Yeah. So that I was like, oh, oh. So and when I, do we see you in it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. That's going to be a lot. <laughs> she finds the government's secret t- time probably, portal. Uh, the chances the are I probably will not be in that show. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're running out of time with you. Uh, before you got the, the role in Fear of the Walking Dead, uh, were you familiar with Walking Dead? Were you watching the show? Did you go back and maybe read any of the comics, find out the story? No, uh, I was familiar with the show. I had friends that were on the show. I'd seen it on and off. Um, I did not read. The, a, I had no time. None of us really had time to read uh, uh, the comics, and they weren't uh, they weren't affecting our story and the story we were going to say directly. Um, so it was basically about I had just finished doing a play in in L.A., and so I was about trying to find Liza as soon as possible and be as prepared as I could possibly be with the short amount of time I had. And so it was basically about, like, who is she, what story are we telling in one episode per episode? So it became about what's going on in the scene. It became about scene to scene and, like, spending some time with the director talking about our backstory and getting to know each other as best we could. And then it just sort of evolved. And we just sort of like worked with like the basics of being truthful to the story we were telling and figuring out our character. Now with the uh, in-between seasons coming up, um, would you go and watch Walking Dead or do you feel that might compromise what you're doing? I don't think it'll compromise what I'm doing. I'm looking forward to, to watching it. You know what else I've never seen? That I have to see, but it's so many episodes, but I'm afraid I'll get nothing done in my life. The Sopranos. Oh, Sopranos. Oh, Sopranos is a great one, too. I know. Everyone's like, you've not seen I'm like, I know, I know, I know so many people, I know, but it's so many years. It's like we're opening up Moby Dick. It's like, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of pages. Yeah, that's a, someone told me the same thing. They're like, oh, you should watch Lost. I'm like, I don't have 180 hours, yeah. but I could like, schedule <laughs> like out Like, the right idea of that causes yeah. me trauma. <laughs> exactly. Got, like, because I know like, that, like, once I open it, I'm going to be like... I uh, do not call. I don't. I can't do anything. I'm not showering. I'm not doing anything for weeks at a time. So I just have one last quick question. Mm-hmm. So I know that they said that there's going to be a plain Walking Dead like spinoff, like one episode type thing. I don't know if you read about this online that there's going to be like an outbreak on a plane, and that they're going to be doing like a one episode like. Oh, spin-off. wasn't that something that they did? These commercial people created these little commercials. Yeah, it's a web series. Oh, it's a web series because there, uh, there was a shot in one of the episodes where Nick saw like a plane. And yeah, it was, like, kind of tilting. And they I didn't know like, if that gonna was like going to be related. It, it was this that. web series. It was t- sounded amazing, right? Yeah. Like they had people like br- bring in like ideas, and then they did one right into like a a, a whole. Is it going to be a full web series? I, yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be my AMC lovely amazing PR person Brian. <laughs> He knows things I don't know. Yeah, sure. Oh my God, that's exciting. That. Oh no, the military is going to come and take me away now for asking that question. <laughs> it's a web series. Okay, cool. Are we not allowed to eat too much? We can't talk about We can't talk about it. Oh, they're going to old yell at us. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Fear the Walking Dead is uh, Sundays, 9 p.m. on AMC. We it's it's it, it's done. It's getting there. Yeah. We're, we're reaching the end here, people. So you got to check this out. I, I can feel it. It's, it's building up to something really good. I'm not even wait. like feigning being excited. I'm watching it for the first time with the audience so I full on go home and get like ah. see I'm already getting aggravated because I know it's going to build up and then it's just going to stop and then season 6 of Walking Dead comes on the following week right. and, and then, then we got to wait till next year for season 2 yeah. and I'm going to spend what 6 months just being really pissed off yeah yeah, but you'll be full enjoying it loving way. it but like damn it they, I knew this was going to happen yeah. but I you'll fell be for fi- it again. the idea is to be really f- filled with the other one and there'll be 52 at some point there'll be 52 weeks of walkers people that right. is what amc is doing worldwide it's gonna be like all my zombie children like that's it <laughs> it's just gonna be one and then the next and then well, back while we're and in back. georgia i'm gonna be like but what happened to los angeles and then we get to los angeles what's going on in georgia well, probably not <laughs> by like the second episode in georgia you'll be like oh uh, 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 la was so far away that feels like such a long time ago yeah <laughs>
That's just going to happen. We're wrapping up here. Final thing. Do you think they're making uh, any kind of uh, merchandising for Fear the Walking Dead? Are you going to have an action figure? I don't know who makes those decisions. but Because that's um, when you know you've really made it, when you have your own action figure that you can annoy your family with on Christmas by sending everybody a right. copy of your Well, we all <laughs> did go through figure. all these amazing machines to get like 100,000 pictures of our bodies taken. Like it was the most incredible thing, which I was like, this is for an action fit, which seemed really They surreal. said that, but it's really for the nude scenes for uh, yeah. Orange is the which, New Black. Which, fine, take it. <laughs> CGI it. Take it on. Bring She's it just going to smile politely and we'll put somebody else's totally. body there. Totally. I'm all for it. It'll make me be able to eat like my pasta sauce <laughs> with my pasta. Elizabeth, thank you so much. It's E. Rodriguez on Twitter. Yes. And uh, Instagram, too. Uh, the only Elizabeth Rodriguez, which, of course, is because there's thousands of us. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a common name. No yes. Yeah. Yes. No, <laughs> at, at the only Elizabeth Rodriguez on Instagram. Yeah, no relation to Robert, though I'm assuming he's very talented and a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead again, Sunday, 9 p.m. on AMC. We're at the end here, people. You need to see it. If you haven't, you want to skip it, I get it. It'll be all on On Demand and binge watch everything. And of yes. course, uh, Orange is the New Black is on Netflix yes. as well. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. When uh, the other st- when the cycle comes up again for either of those shows or a brand new project, please come back oh, and uh, see us sometime. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A new God, die.